So a job that I'm doing today is another Formula Ford, um, well it's just machining actually, we've done a couple of jobs for him before but the last time he was out um, he complained that it didn't have, his engine didn't have much top end power. Um, nothing to do with us, we've only done bits and bobs on his uh, balancing his assembly and things but he's located it to he thinks is his cylinder head, like it's got really wide valve seats on it and a few other bits and bobs. So. This is what we're doing for him. Um, we've done the inlets, we've thinned the seats out, and he's right actually, the seats, these two in particular, are a right mess. These are distorted. There was all different heights, and these, these two seats, like I just said, was distorted. So I've got them where they're all the same height, and then what I've noticed is the porting is different around each throw. Now I've got the three angles, I'm gonna make the porting all the same. But first I've got to do the exhaust, so I'm going to set the seat cutter up for doing the exhaust seats, get them level, and then I've got all the data that I need then to sort his porting out, make sure it's all nice and even. I'm then going to give it a, a skim, because what I want to do is bring the valve up into the combustion chamber a bit more. Then the last thing that I've got to do is um, increase the CCs in his pistons. He's putting another set of pistons in because there were some marks on his original ones, but in the rules there's a specific CC that the combustion chamber in the bowl of the piston has got to be, which is 41 CCs. I've measured the standard ones that he's supplied and they're sitting at 39.2. So I'm gonna adjust that as well. I'll show that a bit later though. I'm gonna carry on with the cylinder head. So I've machined the pist this one piston a couple of times just to get my depth right. And we're really close now, we're at um, 40.6, I guess that is, 40.5 maybe. And it's, But it's got to be 41 in the rules, just, can't see it actually, there. Minimum combustion chamber, 41 cc's. So we're going to have to get this on the mill again, and then just get these valve cutouts down a little bit more. And then hopefully one last check and we should be bang on 41. Then I'll just copy on the other pistons the same depth uh, straight away and then re just remeasure them all. Um, the cylinder head, I've reworked that and tidied up the port in, made sure it's all equal, which is, where is it? I've got to skim it now, but that's the cylinder head all nicely ported and opened up especially around the valve and around the guide and everything so that just wants that just wants a reface now to get it at the right height what i want to run and get the valve sitting where i want them to sit and then we're done wash it and we're done and there we go the final test and it's exactly at 41. so all i've got to do now is machine the other three pistons the same as that make sure they're all equal and uh, we're good to go well that's all four pistons done so these are now all 41 cc's which is the legal requirement for the regs for the formula fords uh, they started life as uh, 39.2 you can just about see in there where i measured it and wrote it down but they're they're all the same but we have had a bit of a disaster as i was tidying up i've dropped a bottle of bud which is uh i don't drink so it's not mine but when the boys go racing they like to have a drink and i just moved one of the bottles and it exploded all over the floor so i've got to tidy that up now oh no so i've just bolted the cross flow cylinder head down and you can see that it's skimming like this which would normally say that um the setup of the cylinder head on the machine isn't quite what uh, isn't quite right um so what I've done is I've measured four points of the cylinder head there, there, there and there. And I think what's happened is at some stage before someone's given a reface and skimmed it on the, on the angle a little bit because uh, this is definitely high here and here and this is still low. So I'm going to take a couple of passes off it and see how many thou bring it in and then have another measure up just to make sure. But... Um, yeah, uh, not good. If that's uh, if that's definitely previous machining, that isn't very good at all. Well, that's all the cross flow Formula Ford bits done. This has just come out of the wash. I've just refaced it. 
So I've tidied up his porting because it wasn't particularly very good. We've leveled up his cylinder head again because it was uh, it measures to be different all over the place. All the valve seats now are at the right height. Tidied up the exhaust, although I do think we could get away with a bit more work on them as well. And then I've machined his pistons to get the combustion chamber at 41 cc's. It started off at 39.2, and they're all uh, they're all spot on now. So I'm just waiting for my customer to come and collect these bits and then I'm spending the rest of the day with my granddaughter. So we'll see you on the next video. To our Last week I gave Tracy and Sam COVID so they're both uh, quite ill at the moment. I'm alright now but um, it's, uh, <laughs> it's been a terrible week for illnesses. Um, this will go out as Donington's happening I guess. Unless Tracy decides to put it out before. Anyway, I'll show you what work we've got in. So this is a red top voxel and this is for a silhouette that races on the same kind of tracks as what the pickups race normally at the same time. Um, I'm boring this out to the first oversize for my customer. I've got to gap the rings and then I'm going to keep everything in cylinder order. So I've been and weighed the pistons, I've measured all the pistons as well so we know exactly where we are with that. Um, is con rods i'm actually just sorting out as the boring bars going down each one so i'm just balancing them i'll, I'll get them out of there they're nice rods they're arrow rods quite old uh, but they're still nice they're dated uh, 2004 so they're 20 year old so i'll probably just check the sizing for him as well make sure that they're still within tolerance i'm also while the boring bars going down i'm finishing off a a brisker formula 2 engine so that's on the big head skimmer uh, i've got a little bit to take off the deck surface to get it to the rule book and then that's hone wash and that's ready to build and uh for the same customer with the voxel he's got a second block that he wants us to just reface and also his crank assembly which that's the crank there we've got to balance that and then repolish it so I'm just changing the settings on the machine to get that right so uh, right there's one more bore left to do on the voxel um, so I'll show you our setup for that the other thing is uh, we've been watching another YouTube channel my wife follows the I can't remember what it's called in the curb on the curb next to the curb something the curb and he uses a different um, camera he uses a DJI something three with a gimbal thing on it has anybody else tried one of those is my question um, so that's the first voxel block that uh, the customers dropped off that's been bored and I've refaced it uh, refacing it so uh, it's done a cracking job of that so I need to put that in the honer now and get that to size and then reface his second block the super finisher is moving in and I'm keeping out of the way because it looks dangerous. People are going to get hurt and it ain't going to be James because I'm nowhere near the scene. It's going to be him, it's going to be him just there. It's going to land on his toes. <laughs> we have got to make this massive super finisher get from there. Down there. We've got to try and get it through that little gap just there. Oh no. So a block here that I haven't filmed actually machining, but I just thought I would say about it is this, um, it coming for a rebore to suit piston and a block reface. And this is for the Eggenberger 1985 Steve Soper car, uh, which is being restored by a friend of mine's company, AWS. Um, so, feel actually really privileged to be able to do this because it's a big part of motorsport history. So this is a Ford Lima block. And, and like I said, uh, we've bored it and refaced it. So I'm really chuffed with that. And then today 
a good friend of ours, Neil, who's got the warrior powered Mark II Escort that we filmed a little while ago doing the cylinder head on. Uh, his son Charlie, that's just turned 10. He's really into making bits and bobs and uh, we've been saving pistons and rods and bolts and turbo housings and things for him and, and giving them to him and he's been making um, little knickknacks and souvenirs and today Neil and Charlie popped over and Charlie has made us a clock for the office so he's painted it done all the bolts he's put a 52 on it and we, yeah we've got a lovely little clock for for the desk so anybody out there wanting one of them then I can have a word with Charlie and uh, you can let me know and we can sort that out too Hi right, guys and today I am grinding a VW air cooled engine or crankshaft and then I am balancing three assemblies for uh, the air cooled cars. First of all I want to say thank you for all the feedback on lighting and sound on the last video. I really appreciate all your comments and we are um, definitely starting to put all that into into action i've ordered some more of the light panels for in the engine build room and um we're using a different microphone today hopefully this is better and we're also changing to a, a clip-on microphone very soon so uh, i really really appreciate all your feedback guys um it's all to do with trying to develop the channel push it forward just just make it a better production hopefully so the content is better for everyone um, so moving on to the first crank it's a standard crank assembly we do quite a few of these for a friend of ours called Brian who specializes in air cooled engines his business is called modified air cooled so it's worth checking him out very good guy very knowledgeable um, so what we do for him is crank grinding and balancing um, this crankshaft um, is actually marked 0.75 so I think it's already been ground to 0.75 but I'm going to go and get some measurements from it after I've balanced it but I'm pretty convinced with the markings that are on it that's where we're at um, it supplied a new flywheel like he normally does and then we've got the front pulley and the clutch and then we've got a race one which is a brand new crankshaft with once again flywheel clutch and front pulley and then we've got his own personal motor which we've already balanced for him but he had a bad I actually can't remember if it was a flywheel or a front pulley but either way we're going to sort that out for him and we're going to do that free of charge because he does give us a lot of work so this is for his own personal one of them's for his own personal motor so we're not charging him for that so the first thing I've done is run this standard crank up and as you can see on this paperwork it's miles out it's 87 grams on the left side and 81 grams on the right side so I've taken an initial bite out of the crank to see uh, with drilling if I'm in the right area and we are both numbers are coming down and the degrees of where it's saying it needs drilling hasn't changed so um, I've started recording as I've actually just drilled my second amount of small holes so we're going to see what that's changed it by so I'm running the machine up let it get up to speed and as you can see these numbers have ju jumped straight down but the position hasn't really changed so that's really good it means that I'm in the right area and what I've done if I bring my camera down is these are the drill holes that I've these are original what are rusty and these are the ones that I've put in ready to put the big drill holes in like what are in these standard marks here so I'm changing my drill bit now and I'm going to open them up so they're quite big and then any more I'm going to do with the grinder to get them in. I don't want to keep boshing massive holes into the crank here and here. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's getting there. This must have had, I'm guessing it might have not got knocked out at some stage looking at this undercut or the undercut here was uh, was quite big at some stage. 
But yeah, um, all good. I'm going to put some more holes in it and we'll see where we're at. These are the new flywheels that he supplies for us. So basically these have four dowels and then it's that big thread inside there. So it has a big like roller bearing nut that screws it all together. But once again, I'll balance the crank first and then I will show the flywheel and the front pulley going on. Um, and that's it. So that's the first crankshaft assembly all balanced now. So I'm going to grind this next. So I'm going to strip it down, bag all these bits up, and then we're going to move on to the second crank, which is a race one, so I'll show that. But that's, let me just let the camera settle. That's the finished result. Both sections are green and they're in the target. So this is the second crankshaft assembly for Brian, which is uh, a billet, stroker crank, a really nice front pulley, another brand new flywheel. So at the moment, I've already balanced the crank. Uh, that needed a very slight adjustment just there. Um, and now I'm doing the front pulley and the flywheel, and it's ever so slightly out. If I let the flickering stop, it's ever so slightly out. So I'm gonna bring them two bits down and then we'll do the clutch as well. So that's that one completely in balance. So what I'm gonna do now is, um, balance Brian's own personal bits which is his front pulley and his flywheel and clutch I believe I don't know I'll go and box it now but I'm going to leave this crank on because the bits will bolt to that and that bit's in balance uh, and I'll use that as like a mandrel for balancing his parts but let the flickering stop that's that done and then like a wally I put the drill through my hand so I've taped that up with some tissue. It really hurts.